definitely you will all be benefited a great deal from the pearls of wisdom that we received from uh, mohan sir sir has an experience of leading most in, uh, institutions of importance as far as distance education is concerned and that uh, and those include not only institutions within our country but also spread far and wide across the globe and that is a great asset for any educationist uh, many of you would not know that mohan sir was closely associated with even uh, the start of igno regional center kochi the first regional center in kerala uh, and uh, the, uh, and that is a uh, that is a kind of blessing that uh, menon sir gave to the state of kerala because the other regional centers in kerala have all um, come out of the strong roots of uh, igno regional center kochi Uh, we are also conducting this program in association with the Igno Regional Centre Kochi and RC Trivandrum. So uh, all the three regional centres do owe a debt to uh, Menon Sir in this particular aspect. Uh, another thing that has always come to my uh, attention whenever I used to interact with uh, Mohan Menon Sir is the simplicity that he has. Whenever we are approach him with any request. any need sir is always there to help us out and even in this case when uh, i approached mohan menon sir with a request to address us uh, on the post covid scenario as far as uh, uh, distance education is concerned sir did not even wait for a second to accept our invitation even though sir was totally busy with a number of other engagements that's the kind of personality that menon sir holds and i have seen very few persons of such a nature who are there to help us all out at any moment that we want want them and it is my proud privilege today to welcome mohan menon sir to deliver this lecture on uh, uh, the post covid distance education scenario and uh, the uh, uh, title of the lecture is distance education a post pandemic perspective and this is something that will be of great use for us both as uh, distance education functionaries as well as the students in the distance education system uh, it has always been a great pleasure to listen to mohan menon sir on various occasions and i was all, uh, I, and i have been lucky to uh, be the beneficiary or uh, beneficiary of the pearls of wisdom that uh, menon sir used to dispel to all of us needless to state the distance education system as well as the distance education framework in the country has benefited by working on the shoulders of eminent personalities and definitely mohan menon sir stands at the forefront of such personalities without a speck of doubt and it is therefore my proud privilege once again to welcome mohan menon sir to this august gathering and uh, let me tell you sir today we have we are lucky to have a large number of functionaries of igno as well as from outside igno participating in this program and they will be listening keenly to your address sir let me also at uh, this moment welcome uh, uh, dr sukumar the regional director of rc trivandrum uh, dr dorothy the regional director of rc kochi dr sindhu pinayar the assistant regional director of uh, rc kochi Dr. Pramila, our own Assistant Regional Director; Dr. Jaleja, uh, Assistant Regional Director, RC Kochi; Dr. Priya, uh, ARD, RC Trivandrum; Sri Vijay Raghavan, uh, ARD, RC Kochi; Sri Praveen Kumar, uh, AA, uh, RC Vadagara; uh, uh, Mr. Joseph, uh, AA, RC Kochi; uh, and all of the coordinators, LSD staff. distinguished invitees who are taking play uh, taking part in this particular function you will all be greatly benefited from the talk that we are going to receive from uh, professor mohan b menon at this outset i would now request uh, our assistant regional director dr pramila o to take over from me and introduce mohan menon sir in some detail to our audience or to you yes please of this webinar professor mohan dinanon respected regional director of rc vadagara dr ram rajesh regional director of rc kachin dr dorothy 
Dr. B. Sukumar, the regional director of Asit Priyandram, and all other distinguished participants of this webinar. Very good morning to all. Today, we are conducting the second webinar of our webinar series on the topic post COVID scenario challenges and opportunities. Today, we have an eminent personality with us to deliver the webinar lecture on the topic distant education, a post pandemic perspective. Professor Bohanty Manon joined the Commonwealth of Learning, COL, in August 2011. Originally, he was education specialist, teacher training specialist, and education specialist. He is responsible for facilitating Commonwealth governments and institutions in focusing on the use of open and distance education for professional development of teachers and other education personnel. As majority of the participants today have degrees from Calicut University, it is a pleasure for all of us, including to me, to welcome Joseph Mohanbi Manon, who had completed his MNC from the University of Calicut. He had completed BA from the Regional College of Education, Mysore, and an M.A. and Ph.D. in Instructional Designing from the Center of Advanced Studies in Education, that is EASC, from University of Baroda. He has 25 years of research, teaching, and administrative experience, and taught the courses of Instructional Designing, Science Education and Research Methodology in CASC for 10 years before joining the Indira Gandhi National Open University in 1987 as Planning Officer and Founder of its Planning and Development Division. In 1992, he was named Director of the Indira Gandhi National Open University School of Education. From 1996 to 1999, he was Chairman of India's National Open School after which he returned to his previous position at Ikna. He was also a visiting scholar to the University of Leeds in 1992 and was attached to Commonwealth of Learning, COL, as a visiting fellow in 1994. Professor Manon has consulted in the area of primary education, open schooling, and open and distant teacher education for international agencies, including UNDP, UNICEF, and COL. He has a number of publications in the area of distance education and teacher education. Besides what is mentioned above, Professor Manon has distinguished himself as the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Words and Open University in Malaysia. Sir, with immense pleasure, we invite you to deliver the lecture on the topic distance education, a post pandemic perspective. Also, I invite all the participants to actively participate in the discussion session after the lecture by Professor Manon. Once again, we invite you, sir, for the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Good morning, uh, all, all participants. And um, uh, if there is any technical error or any, you are not able to hear, please enter that in the chat so that I can I can know there can be some problems sometimes coming in. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, let me thank uh, both uh, uh, Dr. Rajesh, my friend, and uh, so he has to say all good words about me. So he did that in the beginning. So thank you for that, and uh, sometimes it is good to hear that when you are in uh, when you are uh, locked down about your you, you, yourself. That thanks for that, and that was added to that in detail by Dr. Pramila. Thank you so much, and um, it is always a pleasure to uh, participate with um, distance educators, um, especially in my. Uh, institution, the Indira Gandhi National Open University, uh, where I worked from 1987 to 2001 uh, before uh, going into Commonwealth of Learning. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, uh, the presentation, the, the topic of today is very, very relevant. And uh, and um, let me let me in, uh, present with a PowerPoint 
um, if you are not able to see it, please let me know because I'm uh, sometimes, you know, it. Uh, can you see the PowerPoint? So it's opening. It is opening. Has it opened? Uh, no, sir. The PPT hasn't opened. PPT hasn't opened. Okay. Is it open now? No, sir. Uh, no, it is not visible. Okay. This is the problem, you know. Sometimes maybe I have to go back. Uh, now, now it is becoming visible, sir. Yes, it, sir. Is, it is yes, visible. Yes, now. Yes, okay. now it is. Yeah. Is it okay now? No, it's okay, sir. Yeah. Sometimes these errors, it's difficult to identify why it happens, and you have to trouble to. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, now you are able to hear as well as um, see the part. Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Right. Okay. So let me let me start from um, the top, the title itself. As um, uh, I, I thought, I should give as a uh, as a, uh, a a broader title like distance education, a post-pandemic perspective. Although our focus will be more on the learner support services, because most all of you are from uh, the student support uh, system, uh, the, from the study centers, from the regional centers. So I, my focus will be more on that, but obviously it all will come into the within the within the purview of the entire distance education system. In general, as well as um, in particular about IGNO, uh, wherever there is a need. Now talking about the present situation, this is a lockdown period, and we have been telling that it is social distancing. And interestingly, I have been more socially connected during this time than before, when uh, because face-to-face -face interaction becomes more difficult. You have to travel to meet people, whether it is short travel or long travel. Now you don't have to do that. I and mean, WhatsApp uh, is there, social media, other social media platforms. So the social distancing itself is not a very correct term. Uh, even WHO has acknowledged that and say it, it has been physical distancing and socially we have been pretty active uh, using the, that itself shows that how powerful is the digital media and how well the people have been using it for informal purposes as well as for for academic and official purposes during the pandemic period last three four months that this has been happening and we have been rediscovering ourselves. And we have been bridging the social distance and uh, virtual socialization, we might call that, but uh, very effectively we have been using virtual socialization. And the impact of this has been on our life as well as other professional activities. And uh, obviously that impact is also seen in higher education, not only distance education, higher education has been coming nearer and nearer to distance board with the uh, online courses being offered by many universities as well as um, or their courses have been offered through online teaching and uh, even in our school system uh, like uh, what has been happening in Kerala with the Victor uh, television channel uh, coming in a big way to reach out to the school students and uh, it, what something which we have not really analyzed uh, is that it has been more cost effective probably than than face to face. That actually is, is in a way a very promising um, possibility, but also a little uh, worrying because would that mean that we don't need uh, faculty members, we don't need more people? You know, these are some of the issues that uh, is, uh, is coming up. Now, uh, the change in higher education, if you look at the strengths and opportunities today, is that 
for the last 4 5 months we really found uh, that people were ready to think out of the box and not only the academics but administrators also and even policy makers that uh, to think differently and see that how we can reach out to children or students at higher education both uh, face to face uh, higher education as well as uh, uh, as well as the distance mode and uh, how effectively we can do that and technology has always been it is not that technology suddenly came in to help us technology has always been there providing cost effective solutions to what extent we have been using it is a is a different question there may be many reasons for that which we would come in the, the later in this presentation and uh, the policies have also been becoming uh, very flexible you you have heard how ugc responded to that how governments responded to that in the ugc even telling that even practical oriented courses can be done uh, through online they didn't give the details for that but there are ways of probably uh, um, doing that and you the recently that uh, very innovative uh, teacher in the school used the the the, the virtual reality i mean the the the, the uh, to to in the classroom to create an elephant in the classroom you know how effective it was which we really didn't uh, in a in a in a sort of an interactive situation and for children because many a time we find that teaching online to the children is not a very easy thing to do but innovative ways of and technology can make it make it more effective if proper uh, content is available and uh, policies have also been changed uh, changing uh, because of a necessity and more technology mediated strategies are possible and it has been already last 10 15 years we really had discovered ways and means of using technology more effectively for especially for higher education and as far as the students are concerned in the face to face system where the students all come within the age group of 20 or so or even 25 let us say they are all in in fact mostly digital natives they all were born into a digital world most of them or at least they were they were brought up in a digital world they are more uh, familiar with the di digital ways of doing things more than probably you and me and uh, because people like me for example were uh, we were born into a analog radio analog uh, mode i mean uh, it is it was not digital at all i mean only in the 90s the digital technology picked up and um, so we we found it more difficult to use the technology um uh, in in an effective manner but um, um but students probably may find it easier to do that distance education that may not be the case because we have students of all age groups so it may be taking some more time for people in um, and they have been out of the system academic system for a long time before joining uh, back um, in whatever courses they want to do so there that could be uh, a little more difficult and uh, when we are when we are going into uh, the the change that we have we can visualize in higher education this actually would help us also in making things more individualized and inclusive learning individualized we always have been talking about it in distance education that every learner should be able to get what really that learner wants and they it, he or she should be able to learn in a uh, according to the individual needs and inclusive more or less talked about the participation the inclusion that everybody from wherever they are coming from rural urban or different socio economic background should be able to um, learn better of course people say that technology may create a problem for them we can see to what extent that is uh, correct now uh, challenges are also to be seen because it is not just a question of um, the strengths and opportunities of the digital divide is always an issue that is brought up first uh, in 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 our uh, debates and it came during the, the 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 time when the government of kerala was uh, offering this uh, victor ba channel based education people did come out with articles telling about digital divide they were 
they were right to some extent because that was mainly for the schools and schools especially digital divide still exists and not only from the point of view of connectivity i think connectivity in a in a victor channel and um, uh, that comes through the cable network uh, and all maybe reaching out to almost all parts of kerala but then uh, what about the gadgets what about the hardware we found here that many children uh, even in a place like kochin and around they were not having uh, television and so uh, there are a lot of people came together and uh, provided television to them so that they can see these courses uh, uh, the class. they can attend these classes so digital divide exists more for the school sector than higher education sector but, so it is a challenge but it is not a major challenge for higher education and uh, another important uh, problem or another very critical problem is the comfort zone and mindset issue so we were all quite happy with what we have been doing <coughs> and we were doing it for a number of uh, years <coughs> with with some small changes but not major uh, major structural changes or technology changes and even if you look at igno um if you the system that we had in 1985 when we started and 86 87 the first programs were offered uh, the, the 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 self learning net learning materials with uh, study center support and um, audio video programs they, these were the uh, the things used then today also if you look at the basically these remain the same the reading material is one support um system and uh, reading material is one major support and that is uh, uh, maybe it is given by digitally now it is available online but it is reading material that uh, the students have to read and uh, self learning purposes then we also have and then uh, th then there were there were other technology applications which might have happened but primarily that um, uh, they, they remained the same that mindset to come out of that and think about something very different and if somebody says that everything will be online if it is online courses only how one would uh, react to that is another issue and uh, of course people all may not have enough technology related uh, knowledge and skills um among uh, um, among us among the educators and another important aspect is the pedagogical knowledge because many a time uh, distance educators are much more um, uh, familiar with the pedagogy related to uh, online teaching or distance education but uh, the face to face uh, teachers are much less uh, uh, familiar with how pedagogically one has to be different when it comes to uh, using a technology and then of course the rigid policies and structures which is a major issue even today many institute institutions may not like to change completely i mean in the uh, uh, structurally and functionally that is an issue to be dealt, dealt with but if you look at the pedagogical processes for effective learning um self learning becomes um, a, an important way of learning which all of us will agree because the self learning material itself is structured and uh, it's it's uh, interactivity built in to the materials makes it easier for the students to learn from that and then the positive and corrective feedback given given within the material as well as during the study center time so that is the counseling time so that is also important whether it is in the uh, campus based classrooms or in distance education this this basic process is very important real and virtual experiences real experiences wherever is possible or virtual experiences if that is more effective or where real is not very viable reflective practice self reflection and collaborative reflection always has been an important element of learning which uh, uh, not only in school education but also in higher education probably in higher education more important because the 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 students are have lot of background experience um, uh, which they want to bring into the learning they may be working 
so their work experience has to be brought in and reflect on what is newly put in the learning material <coughs> all such things and there should be also possibility for human interactivity the group learning interaction between the learner and another learner among learners learner and the academic counselor the facilitator and the learner and the material i mean also so all these different types of dialogues uh, as uh, distance education theories would say or interactivity is very very important and that will provide uh, for better inclusion and the, all types of students have to benefit from uh, the uh, the learning and as well as different styles of learning some may be more audio oriented people some may be visual visual oriented people some may be text oriented people some learn better by talking to others all these different styles also are to be taken care of now with this background let me go into the actual uh, core of the presentation by telling we are whether we talk about distance education or campus based education both are undergoing a transformative change now when we talk about transformative change towards a blended learning community blended in many ways that we can see when uh, a transformative change is is not just adding something to whatever that is going on it is integrating innovative practices within the existing good practices and if there is a structural uh, uh, transformation required then we may have to do the tran transformation and add newer things into the into your practice that is what basically a transformative change means it is different from a, a, a linear linear way of additive sort of change adding to one or the or to the other and the older things remaining the same now older things we may have to leave out and uh, bring in newer things and integrate into the learning environment so that is what a tra transformation would really mean and we have been going through this for a time it is not that transformation started only from when on march uh, 22nd when we started the or 24th or whatever <coughs> the home um, how the lockdown and it is much before that for the last 10 10 20 years the change has been in the in the scenario in the in but but people were not using it mainly because of the resistance to change that is one thing that comes um with um, uh, in a in a changing change situation people were resist the comfort zone people were doing what they were doing they thought that is the best thing to do so they don't want to change and they don't want to probably learn new things and um, and then of course some started being doubtful about it yeah possibly it will work but then you know is it possible in our situation are we prepared for that maybe in western countries it will work but not in 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 developing countries or in india our number is very large and all such excuses the uh, uh, partly true maybe but then partly we were not even ready to discuss about it so there people were doubtful about it then suddenly that comes that ah it is possible to do that starting to be positive has been happening for some time and that's why you do change uh, find change even in the igno system if you talk about um, uh, several online things that people we were doing even before the pandemic uh, started and the swayam for example at the national level repository many other um, um, the gyan okay. gyan vani gyan darshan all these have been there i mean adding to then supporting the students but we didn't really think of a structural transformation and uh, but during the pandemic it really happened because we were compelled to do that we were compelled to be uh, to change because there was no there was no other way and uh, now now we have that positive mindset i suppose to some extent many of us have many of us in the process of achieving that and then coming to uh, the area of distance education with that sort of a positive change in uh, in in mind uh, and look at how history uh, brought in uh, i mean developed the, in, in our country from 19 uh, correspondence education when the 60s when we first had the correspondence education in india in the university of delhi and uh, it was only printed lessons and assignments then came to distance education where uh, openness was not there but uh, uh, 
uh, other tutorials were used, but then there was no openness. It is like any other face-to-face -face, uh, uh, teaching, campus-based uh, teaching situation in distance education to be in the beginning. But when IGRO came into existence, <coughs> an open distance education became the, the key word. And it was 1969 when UK started the UK, op UK Open University. Then, of course, other open universities like Antra and all came up in India. And then the IGNO in 1985. And open distance education acknowledged the, uh, the use of technology, the use of a strong student support system, and also using technology and, and also being very open and flexible. In fact, distance learning's main contribution is that making higher education uh, uh, accessible to all so without the uh, rigidities of uh, time or duration or uh, even course combinations and all such things i don't have to talk to you you all know about it but that was a major 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 change if you look at at that time uh, and that happened with igno coming in and pushing that uh, that particular philosophy um, which many are accepting even in the face-to-face -face system today. And from there, if you look at the 90s, uh, there has been this digitization coming in a big way. And we have things like on the left, one, one side we found MOOCs and OER-based learning, open educational resources-based learning, etc. happening. That is one type of thing. And second was, uh, learner support system still being considered very important. That was another uh, uh, group of people who emphasized that along with online education, um, there is a need of a learner support. You cannot just leave the students to learn like in MOOC. MOOC you are supposed to learn on your own. In OER based, OER is basically the resource. Very less uh, learning support, learner support is provided when you, you use the resource materials. So both these came up. So we are actually in a situation today where both these are in uh, happening. Now, we will talk more about here the online education with technology integrated learner support system. That will be the focus that I, I was doing. Although the other one, uh, I will just mention because it is important to know about them. The open educational resources is a, is a big area. The last 20 years, it is a lot of research and the practice has been going on in this area with open licenses, Creative Commons licenses. We can use and reuse and modify or the, uh, um, the internet, the digital materials that are online available. And there are open licenses for that. Copyright is relaxed. And that's a major advantage for using resources. And uh, you don't have to create, uh, recreate uh, resources as we did when Igno started, we, we had all the materials we produced ourselves. Today, a, 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 if an open university is, start, be, uh, is initiated, I don't think it will take the, 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 all the things that Igno did. Should not. Igno was a pioneer. Pioneers always have to go through that. But now that a lot of resources are available, and if they are open and uh, they are available digitally, and so that's about OER. That is one major thing. SWAM, the, uh, the, the ministry says that, OK, SWAM is there. People can learn from that. SWAM is not a learning platform. It's a repository of good materials. And uh, there is no sort of letter of support in that. There is no testing and assessment in that. There is no certification that can come out of that at the moment. Maybe it's possible to link with certification later. Then, of course, in the last about 10, 12 years, the, the MOOCs have been in, uh, uh, in, uh, in circulation, the massive open online courses, which uh, the Kosura and all these uh, experiences in US, they said that thousands and thousands of people can join a MOOC course. Yes, they can join, they can register, but that will be the success uh, of students. How many will come out of that alive? alive in the sense successful. So this is this is an issue even today. The major reason why they are not coming out uh, successful is that lack of proper learner support that, that uh, is in the MOOCs. The OER University in uh, New Zealand in Dunedin uh, came up and then said that uh, university, all universities can pa be part of this umbrella university of OER University 
and uh, the fun three major functions that that uh, universities normally do um, uh, can be done by different institutions. It need not be done by the same university. Like for IGRO, IGRO for example, IGRO has a major course development and content creating system. As all of us know, we were doing it in sitting in uh, uh, in Delhi with uh, good uh, ex acad academics coming in and uh, making good materials. So that is a real resource creation. And second is what has been happening in the regional services, the learner support. That is the second major component. And third, that assessment and certification. So th these three things which IGNO has been doing on its own, OER University says that you don't have to one university to do that. Three different universities can do that. So that's another experience, experiment that's coming up. And uh, now that online courses is more that's one of the terms that is that has been in circulation in the last two, three months. Everywhere, every day, there will be something on online courses. New online courses started or somebody talking against that, somebody for it. Because they all talk, they think that alternative to higher education campus based is online courses. So that's a misconception um, that that has to be also corrected because online courses on its own may not make a difference um, as uh, or may not be able to replace entirely the uh, the, the, the classroom based teaching or uh, distance education courses uh, with learner support. So that is what I want to focus here now. See these three components, learner learning resources, learner support and assessment and certification. Now, every student, I'm talking about single student, it's a single student centered learning design that we really have to think of. And when you talk about post post pandemic scenario in the or in open education or distance education, I would prefer to call it here open education because we are talking about the flexibility, the student centered way of looking at things. Uh, according to their needs, according to their background, their background qualification or their interest, their learning style. Each one will like to learn and have uh, the, the courses combined according to that, taking as much time as needed, etc. So that sort of a open distance education in the post scenario, the post pandemic scenario, many would uh, say today, when are we going back to our older way, old ways? I don't think we'll ever go back to our older ways in our life itself. I mean, I'm, uh, we, we can introspect and see that what we have been able to or trying to do during the two, three months. Um, I think uh, we may not be doing all the things which we did earlier after this also, even in our day to day life. And the same thing is going to happen in all professions, not only in education, in all professions and in distance education also. So going back to the old ways in distance education is an opportunity lost. If any university is planning to go back and work in the same manner as uh, we did earlier, then it is a big uh, loss that we have. We have not learned from what we have been trying to do during the pandemic time. So we will surely, uh, one would have, one would have to say that the post pandemic period will be different from pre pandemic period or during pandemic period. During pandemic period also, we did so many things, which is a, uh, which may not be always the best thing to do. I remember that uh, working with the Palestine refugees in Jordan, um, in the UNESCO, um, I, we always find there is a clash going on between the, uh, the, the, the uh, Israelis and the Palestinians and the, our, our schools were affected. They were destroyed. Some teachers died and all this. And then we had to take care of the students. The, the major issue was uh, bringing them back to normal. They were many of them were in trauma because that is different from here. Here at least they are bored and sitting at home. But there it was not. So they were even uh, some of them even didn't uh, survive. I mean, actually, they died during the conflict time. So uh, without their friends and the trauma, bringing them back to 
their ways, engaging them in very positive activities what was required. Maybe I think today's teaching that uh, happening through online should be seen more from that point of view. You know, it might have been different because, you know, they try to do many things and students are anyway outside the classrooms, really. They were not able to come to the study center, but study center support, the counseling support was given through online uh, conferencing. <coughs> but all these are only a temporary arrangement. I think we should not see this the same way we'll continue. It will be different when we'll have more opportunities after the pandemic. And the central circle that we see here is the resource support that is very much required for the students. Academic counseling, in the way it has been going on till now, to the extent that uh, it is possible, like students coming to the classes, counseling sessions, tutorials, and they uh, learn from the academic counselors. Yes, that also will be there. Not that we are completely ruling out that. The study center support is very valuable. That's a major asset that uh, uh, IGNO has developed in the entire country. The network of study centers is a major asset. And I don't think that because online is there, we don't need the, uh, the study centers. That is not a good solution. In fact, study center and the academic counselors um, role becomes more vital in the post endemic uh, endemic period. That's what I believe. Because they would be involved not only in the academic counseling face to face, but also in online facilitation. And online facilitation using whatever platform, uh, the, the software that is possible, either through Google Meet, like what we are having, or WhatsApp groups, Facebook, special Facebook, uh, closed Facebook pages. Uh, platforms or any other way of interacting with the students uh, other than face to face also can be used and uh, not only for teaching purposes but also for partly for even uh, assessment purposes um, uh, even today of course even universities are trying to have online uh, terminal examinations conducted there are code softwares being uh, developed for that purpose. They have really not tried out and we don't know how successful that would be. But uh, surely for formative evaluation, continuous evaluation, assignment uh, and assignment marking, feedback, etc. I think it is very useful to have uh, online uh, online ways, online facilitation or online platforms. And there are several apps available for that, for interaction like um, uh, you know, whether it is VisIQ or Skype or whether uh, and with a lear learning management system that is can be made available at the regional center level or uh, or even IGNO itself going for a conferencing platform. I, I wonder why IGNO itself has not gone for a confer conferencing platform. We are talking now this presentation by Google Meet. Why should we go to Google Meet to uh, that? We should we probably should have a, a Igno Meet or something like that as the platform. And we are capable. We are capable of creating such a platform. It is not that we are not capable. And Igno has all the um, resources for that, financial as well as technical resources to do that. I, I really feel that Igno will do that. I mean, I'm sure, sure Igno also people must be thinking about such a platform, which can be made available to all the Igno uh, academics or um, uh, regional centers and study centers. So that platform can be used uh, for on online purposes. Now, I tried to put into this um, diagram uh, a student support system in the post pandemic perspective. I am not taking away the basic structure of IGNO. That IGNO at the headquarters, when I say it is not only IGNO, and IGNO and other support provided by the ministry or other uh, central agencies uh, for distance education, like Swayam. Swayam is not based in IGNO, but Swayam, IGNO is very closely involved with Swayam. <coughs> Gyan Darshan and Nyanwani are in, uh, involved. Maybe there are other things also IGNO has done or is planning to do. And uh, uh, IGNO can have a uh, conferencing. And national level conferencing sitting in IGNO, 
Interestingly, the first time that the conferencing when India did in 1992, that was using the satellite from IGNO. When the, some, some of our students had the extended contact program, like in diploma in higher education, extended contact program was organized online and uh, from the studios of IGNO. Maybe IGNO might think of uh, alternatives of that sort, surely not the way that was done in the 90s, but in a very different way because today today the uh, the web is the digital learning is the is the way to do that so uh, it is easier to um, do that centrally but centrally during all doing all the things for a country like india is not a right solution it has its role the center igno headquarters has its role but that doesn't mean that everything will happen from there like uh, some people would say, why do we need you with several universities? We need have a one university which will teach everybody in the entire country. That's that, that's completely, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a very mad thinking. Uh, and um, the, the regional variations and the, not only at the state level, but also at the center level, the area level cannot be taken care of by any sort of central arrangement. Although the support coming from central uh, the course materials, assessment, certification, etc., is very important, or even online support coming from uh, uh, from the center headquarter is important. Then comes in the regional center. There are certain functions that regional center-wise it is possible to systematize. For example, what is happening now here is a is a is an initiative of the regional center. And there is many such things can be organized by the regional center and even program related online academic support can be provided by the regional center. Um, uh, but when it comes to course based support, individual courses, even regional center may not be able to take care of that. That's where study center becomes very important because the learners, although also, although some of them could come to the regional center or talk to the regional uh, officers, uh, the study center is their main uh, stay because they can walk to the study center if there is a need or take a bus to the study center or they can they, 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 they that's nearer to them and uh, and study center already is structured in a manner that some administrative support is provided there logistic support is provided there even part of the admission process is being taken care of by study center and of course, the main <clears throat> focus being academic counseling and uh, assignment. Uh, that's also academic counseling online as well as assignment, assignment uh, support or rather feedback and uh, marking, etc. And, and, and along with that, now I think study centers could take up the facilitating digital learning network. I'm focus focusing on something like this, which is quite new. So in a way, it is adding to that, but it is integrating with what is already done. By adding that, probably some of the face-to-face -face, uh, counseling sessions may not be required, but uh, or maybe used for different purposes, or the, the digital learning net network can uh, strengthen the existing uh, uh, counseling um, activities. So these three levels are there, and students are actually outside these levels, unlike uh, in a higher education system where the students is within the university or college but here they are at home or they are in the workplaces but they also bring with them a, um, a lot of strengths like student specific professional and personal experiences and other external resource support they bring in a student can say that okay i have some some library nearby i will come go and uh, refer there or they will talk to people around or they in their network so student also does things on their own and bring with them a lot of strengths which they bring into the, their learning process. They can reflect on things academically provided by IGNO in its courses and relate with what is uh, happening in, the, in, in, the, uh, in their own workplaces. Now today that is not, although that is being tried and many students may be doing it on their own, but networking among students is very poor so technology comes in as a use at all the four levels as i have seen in the shown in the uh, in this picture 
the digital learning support both offline and online can have can support igno headquarter in many ways to support the students indirectly and regional center to support the students maybe regional center level uh, um, uh, is more for the uh, more for support to academic things than real academic things maybe some of the some of the academic thing as academic support also can come from there as the program related things or um, uh, sometimes in certain courses regional center plays a major role because there may be program centers or practicals to be organized and uh, that might be with the initiative of the regional center and when it comes to practicals also there are a lot of digitized materials that is today virtual reality that can be used which um, uh, which the regional can, center can help because it can uh, find a institute which may be able to provide such experiences or headquarters would be able to create such content materials in both ways both headquarter and the regional center can help uh, use, using digital learning uh, technologies or digital learning applications at the study center level we are actually talking about creating a digital learning network now i want to focus more on that digital learning network the academic counselor sees the students now when the students come to the regional center i mean i'm sorry the study center now they can be up, they, they can be on regular contact with the, the role of the academic counselor might change i'm not telling that they all will do it uh, because they are most of them are part time people they are not um, 99% of them may be part time people or they are uh, or even 100% they are not employees of the of igno direct i mean they are only part time uh, contractual uh, support academics contractual academics from the face to face system the 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 uh, tradition i don't want to use the word traditional that's why the the the, the classroom based system the colleges mainly or the universities or even other um, uh, in, in corporate uh, offices probably sometimes or uh, even some industries all these may be there so their support is taken for the um by the study center and that's why it is important that variety of institutions may may have to be registered as or maybe may have to be um, uh, allocated or what do you call them maybe recognized as study centers now the old the ways of only recognizing study centers where already the study center should have been a registered society or there should be you know um, all the requirements of um approvals and all these i think today they are they are all uh, completely redundant anybody can be if, if i can for, for example provide some space and say that in these courses i can be a academic counselor i don't know why uh, that shouldn't be taken care, uh, taken and many people may be available who may be able to help our students space is a pro thing and now of course with online coming in uh, that only only once in the way that the space will be required the actual physical space for students to come and sit so you have to think of all flexible ways of um taking advantage of the academic strength available not only in the colleges and the universities which igro has been doing but also from outside the systems outside these formal systems without talking about the formal rec uh, recognition and that's a major process today i'm sure the regional center all all of you will know that recognizing a st study center and once we go into a very rigid ways of recognizing the study study centers or making them uh, igno study centers before they any when an institution applies they have to have these many documents to be shown etc uh, i don't think that's redundant according to me i think people can volunteer and say i am ready to provide this academic counseling to uh, these people i will sit at home and do it i will use online facility and do it why not so i think expect such changes i think i hope uh, igno will think out of the box and come out with very flexible ways of um, getting people into the system so that is uh, that that's um, 
uh, one thing and their role also will change because the role will be not only giving face to face tutorials yes they should and they will continue to do that because face to face part is very important for our distance uh, learners because they are the the isolation of students isolation partly when they know that they can walk into an uh, a, a place and then talk to somebody that is that that will help i think that sort of a support is very much required but that need not be a place always they can always have a, um, a for each course there could be a whatsapp group created where all students will be member of that group and where academic discussions will go on and the, the academic counselor will act as a facilitator within that group i mean it is not difficult to visualize that because even in the pandemic period i have seen many um, uh, privately created uh, whatsapp groups have come out with um, uh, major uh, um, i mean uh, did major activities all virtually and came out with certain products like a video a music uh, <coughs> the the a, 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 a um, performance they did uh, some 10 people sitting around the world and then coming together and performing something together all such things have happened uh, mainly through an online presentation and there are platforms and apps available for that many more apps will come come in even if we stop all the chinese apps i'm sure india will produce more apps to uh, do many of these applications so i think we have to look for such things where where, where, where uh, count, uh, the academic counseling becomes much more facilitating a digital learning community and what is that community i'm not talking about the entire students of igno course wise digital learning community there are 50 students in the course 60 students 100 students in the course that is more manageable also and the academic counselor is supposed to take care of a course and give academic counseling for that digital environment can strengthen that through these apps i think that is that is the type of uh, um, thing that will happen if it is already start i'm sure informally some of these must be happening already but not in a very structured manner i think that's something we can expect uh, without much of a problem uh, because um, that the, these are the apps very commonly available conferencing is another synchronous and non synchronous interaction synchronous as it is happening now real time interactivity with a group of students and the uh, academic counselor we were we were doing it in uh, in wawasan open university when when i was working there because students were very few there were only about 10 20 students uh, uh, in certain courses they were distributed all over malaysia there's no way that they can create a study center there or uh, have a separate academic counselor there we call the tutor uh, tutor there so instead uh, we used to have visiq which is one of the platforms and there are other platforms the other day uh, i think dr rajesh was mentioning that about this uh, what is that um, uh, another platform which is now much more effective open me um, 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 the, the open meet or op something like that which is an open uh, which is an open source uh, platform some of the platforms may, may not be open source visiq was not a, an open source platform so we can think of open source platforms um, uh, which can be used for that purpose and um, and both for non synchronous as well as non synchronous chatting uh, interacting i think sometimes non synchronous i have found is much more academically effective than synchronous because every time the facilitator has to uh, reply uh, it, 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 the, the, the academic counselor can reply taking some time. It need not be immediate um, uh, reply. Sometimes thought out replies can be, uh, or many students are interacting, chatting among themselves. Then the academic counselor comes back and say, you have been uh, discussing this particular issue, but uh, you see that it is, uh, this is the, these are the concepts that we have to keep in mind in doing it, and etc. to help them to link with the academic material the learning materials uh, the, the academic counselor can do that so i visualize a major role change for an academic counselor um, uh, from being only a tutorial 
person who conducts tutorial and marks the assignment to have provide uh, ongoing uh, online facilitation to students in the digital learning community. And these learners can, of course, learn from each other because they are all interacting within the digital learning community. And even online assessment and feedback should be possible. Platforms are there. Uh, we have heard about already India has been both, you know, also has used, I think, but NOS has used, then IOS has used is on demand examinations, which is digitally all these uh, items are uh, item banking is done and uh, you can have random uh, question papers created. And um, you see, you can go into many examples for that. And that I, I find that. You, you, we don't have to reinvent, uh, or rather, we don't have to even go for new technologies for it. The technology is available. What is probably not available is uh, two things. One is um, the, uh, the the readiness for us to do it, or other structural changes that might have to be take, done, and also creation of good content, good content material, multimedia content very different from probably what we already have, the course material. I think course materials may have to go through a major change using more of the online resource materials and the open resource materials, etc. Multimedia, virtual reality, many such things may have to be integrated into the course material. And uh, so the online co learning community for each course on the internet, the community is motivated and facilitated by the academic counselor. And there are, as I was telling, that there are a lot of apps that uh, are available. Um, our LMS can be made use of. I mean, these are things which um, one has to work out. Designing the whole thing becomes very important. Although there can be a broad design, course-wise variations in the design also can come in, the learning design. And uh, that is how that uh, the post-pandemic uh, period may change in the student support system. And uh, I don't want to go further because it's already I have crossed the time. I think it's almost like 50 minutes or more that I have taken. So let's now think of going for uh, discussions or um, question and answer sessions. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to make this uh, talk. Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful talk. Um, uh, in fact, it was an eye opener to what uh, the post COVID scenario would look like and uh, what are the technological and other possibilities those exist uh, which can actually bridge the gap between the student and the uh, institution. Uh, it has been, as usual, a pleasure to listen to you, sir, and we have all benefited a great deal. Now, as, uh, as uh, Mohan sir was uh, mentioning, it's time for discussions. Uh, I think it is uh, always good to uh, gain additional information and additional knowledge from uh, itself, uh, given his vast background and uh, terrific experience in this field. So I invite the participants now to put forth their questions so that we can discuss that. You can come online one by one. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, kindly. Uh, uh, yeah. Welcome. Welcome, so, so much, sir. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, uh, sir. Good morning. Because uh, because yesterday uh, after long long period, I got the opportunity to get your excellent presentation. Because when I when I when I got the invitation from Ragara, mentioning your name about uh, today's talk, I was very particular to attend today. Just I, the timing also, just I picked it accordingly, just I, today I attended. And I, I received, I just I got, got your all inputs. Because especially when you talk about many things, I recall our association during 92, 1992 to 96, because we know that both Menons were, Dr. Shea Menon, Professor M.B. Menon, were in the Igno. You are leaving Igno. Actually, I always used to tell in many platforms, Actually, you know that uh, lost that uh, expertise, two expertise in the you know, system because you two people only develop our district, that district of the school of education in a wonderful way. And when you mention that uh, even that our IT technology 
implemented in uh, PTDH program, especially for ECP, I would reconnect because for 92 to 96, PTDH, more than 800 students across the Kerala state, we used to travel to Trivandrum, Calicut, because different different places we used to connect to ECP. Always Professor Menonsar and Shah Menonsar used to visit at Cochin, and we used to travel to Calicut. We used to conduct the ECP at the JDT Slow, especially in the Trivandrum, EMG, we used to conduct it. And uh, Yarnamhulam, because a large number, we used to conduct in the St. Albert's College, because that, that time we used to install the Risha and everything. That time itself, we received that uh, ECP presentation from headquarters and the other aspects through that ICT technology also. Such an innovative method, even 92 onwards, our main notes are and chairman are implemented. So such a great personality today presenting such a post that uh, pan a pandemic scenario about challenges and <coughs> about our uh, distant education system and everything. But uh, rightly, because after hearing uh, uh, Menon sir, uh, just I wish to one or two lines I should uh, 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 to bring to your knowledge, because just uh, because that uh, word year system with a very flexible board, it was established. The people like me uh, actually molded by you people only because you because 90 to 90 uh, range people when you join we had a very close close association with the headquarters especially Professor Menon sir and Chair Menon sir and uh, what now what just I lost some around 28 30 years experience what I could uh, come across now you mentioned about that uh, systems will be more flexible and everything. What I got experience because now slowly we are going to rigid system from the flexible mode to rigid system. Rightly, you pointed out academic counselors, golden time because the academic counselors from corporate, from industry, from that education institution also. Now, because of the UC or whatever may be the apex body, but now that we are going to very rigid in the even for academic counselors, we are thinking about uh, uh, 10 years experience, 5 years teaching experience, like that. So, just I hope that slowly that ODL system, with what concept I think it has been established, slowly I think it is going to reach it and it may not, the purpose may not serve. That is one point. Also, rightly you mentioned, because if anybody, if any space, anybody is willing to take any classes to give the motivation to the distant learners can go for any study center or learner support centers. That also now it is going to be reached nowadays because now a lot of that even any because earlier any NGO or any trust or any uh, government institutions or private institutions can be a learner support centers. That also now it is going to be very rigid because like any institution without any affiliation from the state government or that any uh, local university or central university affiliation one, one institution cannot be learner support centers. Such situation also is going. The other thing that, uh, that what is that autonomy, because like rightly also you mentioned, because uh, more, more autonomy, more deceleration should be in the regional center level. But I think nowadays it is that autonomy and that deceleration is not taking place. That way also the purpose is not uh, going to be uh, Properly, it is going. So, what I would last 30 years, my experience also, which slowly, slowly we are going to the, the rigid mode, but always we are talking about that uh, to reach the unreached and everything. But this type of uh, the establishment of learner support centers, appointment of academic counselors, and uh, other that the rigid type of things, how we can reach the unreached, or what we dreamt in the 1985 uh, uh, with the establishment of, you know. And you people was, were pioneer in the system, and this how to overcome it because always people used to tell that it is a, our upper body regulations. With that regulation, we should stick on the uh, rigid norms and procedures. So I, I personally I feel that this type of uh, stick procedure norms definitely we cannot reach that uh, unreached. That is my uh, personal experience and. Uh, just rightly, you mentioned that some people right now uh, don't think 
this uh, lockdown period mentioned that a digital uh, a digital mode can replace that uh, already face to face mode that also i am not agreeing because it can strengthen or it can supplement but i think now even many platform people are talking even uh, just uh, cost effectiveness is there so totally our practices face to face everything can be replaced by uh, that our uh, digital mode that was some uh, many platform even our ignore also because many uh, many meetings people are telling after that uh, uh, that after lockdown i think uh, all the practices and theory classes can be through the digital mode so that we can reduce the cost of fitness and everything so personally i feel that it can only supplement it can strengthen not it can it cannot be placed overall the face to face counseling as well as the practical aspects and everything so this is my views so anyway just i uh, just i am very much thankful on behalf of uh, regional center twantra and my own behalf and for having such a excellent uh, your uh, lecture and also just i wish to i, I wish uh, please convey my regards to dr shemen and also because i think five or six week six years before when i was in delhi just i happened to uh, meet him after that a uh, long period i could not uh, uh, meet him or i could not see him also so just to please convey my regards to dr shemen and also with this th- with, with this words i expect your views about my submission or my presentation thank you very much thank you sir over, over to you uh, thank you dr sukumar and uh, nice to see you uh, virtually uh, after a long time and uh, your hair has become a little gray uh, maybe because of your work and, and age catches up you know I, i see my hair has gone completely almost so uh, that apart um, you raised some re- re- very relevant uh, issues is it we should uh, it is easy for us to um talk in an academic uh, manner uh, and especially person like me who is not in the system so when i say that i am much more uh, free to come out with my views uh, and um, but i what i when i talk about it i talk with all the practical aspects kept in mind within uh, my whatever i can visualize so i i can see that i mean it is not only igno that as uh, there are some of the rigidities i have cropped in and uh, many institutions this has happened um and uh, that is nothing um, what can i say strange about it that's how institutions grow and become more uh, uh, rigid and uh, many people uh, equi- e- e- think that rigidity is quality if you have more rigidity and make sure that everybody goes through um, the same uh, line then that will be quality see but which is which is uh, in fact uh, unfortunate but then that has happened now i think what well, we have to look at uh, this in a two different ways one is from the institutional point of view institutional point of view they will do things which uh, which they think is appropriate like for example about recognition of study centers or who should be the academic counselor when you talk about the experience and qualifications i can see as an administrator that something if you don't do that uh, then we may get x y and z as academic counselor which is also not good that are extreme see that is also to be kept in mind so the minimum qualification thing is uh, i may also support the same thing whether it should be 10 years or 5 years is a different issue whether doctorate is required or not is a, another issue but if there should be some criteria in making sure that the academic counselor Uh, given accreditation to be igno um, to in, in igno academic counselor should have certain but then that need not be only people working in an institution or which i think igno is flexible on that i uh, there may be a need to make it more flexible <coughs> i agree with you <coughs> let's open see because we do we also don't know what is igno thinking uh, during as this pandemic uh, uh, time will bring some more wisdom to you know I, i i hope so that 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 might happen so that's one thing that is from the institutional point of view same case with regarding the uh, study center also what, who should be the study when imt was imt was a 
uh, study center you mentioned IMG name IMG was one of our first study centers maybe the first study center after um, in, uh, of you know even before the regional center Cochin was created Cochin Regional Center was created sometime in 1988, uh, but uh, EMT was already there when the first program of management program was uh, created. It was not a college, it was not a university. Uh, many of the criteria we were putting for other centers was not there, but it was a government institute. Uh, so, Patma, uh, she was the director of that who became chief secretary later uh, of Kerala. Um, uh, so, uh, so, th what I'm trying to say is some sort of from your point of view, from your Not already. Nothing is heard. Hearing. No audible, sir. Sir, sir. No audible, sir. No audible, sir. No audible, sir. No audible, So what I was trying to say is I will not repeat all the things but to say the rigidities and flexibilities have to be seen from institutional point of view. Institutions may, I agree with Dr. Sukumar that we will have to be more um, creative in thinking about our ways of functioning. Uh, rigidity should not, but unfortunately, the Indian institutions have mostly becoming more rigid to the extent that if you MHRD may even think that it would have been good if everybody is taught from Delhi for the entire country. That is the mindset of even the even the policy makers, which is unfortunate. But unfortunate, we you and I may not be able to do anything about it. But that's one. But as an individual learner, I have all the freedom to do what I want to do. Whether I come to your academic counselor or not, I what resource I may even not read your materials. I will read something else. You assess me. That is the way that things are going to change. So I, I have great faith in our younger community. I'm sorry to say that that they will, they will have to put more demand on uh, uh, on the functioning and uh, academic counselors. I I would request our the academic counselors that they should encourage more learner-centered ways of doing things. I cannot, I mean, I'm probably not answering your question fully, Dr. Sukumar, but uh, but that is the only thing I can say at the moment, because institutions have their own uh, ways of doing things, which is not uh, deliberate, but it is, that's how it is. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, let us take the next question. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, may I ask a doubt, sir? Yes, yes, sir, yes please, may I ask... please, madam, please. Uh, okay, sir. We have discussed about the, about the online education, and then we should go back to some post COVID period to pre COVID period. That is okay, sir. My doubt is regarding the regular system of education, that is classroom education system. 
Uh, my doubt is even after the post covid period we it could stay on that this uh, this period that is now yeah. we are uh, doing some classes online classes like that or will it go back to the pre covid period that is my doubt sir in the case of classroom teaching regular teaching the yeah. classroom education system stay even after the post covid period that is my doubt sir yeah yeah uh in in fact uh, the other day i gave a talk to um, um, a webinar organized by the alamein college in kochi uh, and the 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 same issue we were discussing and i was very happy to see that many of the academics uh, um came and said that i know i cannot be the same when i go back to classroom next i was quite surprised that many of the young academics Uh, teachers from the formal higher education system said that i should have known this earlier i was afraid of te- using technology i didn't know how to uh, use a, um, uh, a, a a conferencing facility or even whatsapp group to be created whatsapp for informal purposes they were using it but how it can be used for i think i think uh, there will be a change they will i don't think all of them i cannot say for the institution as a whole the demonstration of the it itself will change but um, in in a classroom situation the teacher is the main person the teacher in the classroom decided that i am going to change and we were talking about the flip the classroom for the cla- uh, which is distance education which is already flipped that so that is why i didn't bring that concept the flip the classroom is that whatever we have been traditionally doing in the classroom the learners will do outside the classroom and whatever the learners have been doing outside the classroom talking to each other discussing and all these they will do inside the classroom so that will become much more uh, possible not in a complete change but gradual change will happen uh, there were you know there were the same college that i visited uh, 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 some time back some three four years back i asked the academics in that college that uh, the the teachers that why do why are you not using open educational resources the students can download that and use it from so we are not allowed to use a smartphone in the college they said okay today that has changed completely completely the plat the, the management itself says which is a very progressive management i should say in that college they itself they say that we are ready to put it there put a learning plan management platform they are uh, conducting webinars from the college uh, and uh, one of those webinars only i participated and uh, these are all the initiatives of the uh, teachers so the answer to your question is that no i think if we have been sensitive to things happening in this four months no teacher can go back to the classroom and do the same thing what they have done earlier but if you ask there will be one or two yes less the better more people should do uh, different thing and the, the the college should provide all the infrastructure and the support and the capacity building capacity building is an issue they all know that they all want to do it but they don't know some of them were not even uh, able to deal with a conferencing uh, setup at home when they were opening up i mean i still google me to know and you say you like problem as we had problem just now there will be problems how to trouble shoot and all these is a technical issue if the teachers get uh, worried about the technical issue their academic things become go into the background so that has to be completely the board has to make sure that no such technical issue happens and the the capacity building in terms of pedagogy and the way design a learning design or learning environment can be created in the classroom using digital environment also is a challenge i think that is where we they will faculty development programs will have to be organized for them because classroom teaching word is the go there is no teaching in the classroom alone so that will be the that is the answer to your question uh, i don't think we will we should go back or we will any of the academic will not go back to the same situation thank you sir uh, uh, thank i you, hope uh, your question has been answered uh, dr pramila okay okay thank you sir thank you very much uh, uh,
Uh, anyone who wants to ask a question or uh, make a suggestion, kindly come online. <laughs> Other participants may mute while the person asks the question alone may unmute his mic. I have uh, principal MCT, uh, Dr. Salam, on the screen. Sir, do you want to ask a question? Hello? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, myself, uh, Shihabuddin from uh, Nilambu Ramal College, Mohan sir. Uh, what I face is during the uh, online counseling sessions, what we have been implementing in our regular platforms, regular uh, online sessions, we are taking three hours per day as a direction uh, by the government. But what we find is that the majority of students is out of the reach of our uh, online sessions only sessions uh, because of the network problem is there also uh, because of the uh, unavailability of the facilities to access our classes but uh, by the lack of uh, intervention of our management uh, led by pv abdul wahab mp last day we have distributed uh, 50 smartphones smartphones but it is only uh, it is it, it cannot be implemented throughout the uh, state uh, but still there is a lot of people a uh, lot of students which are out of the reach of the online sessions. This is the major problem we are facing today while we are going with uh, the online sessions to uh, tackle the, uh, to, uh, to uh, address the issues raised by pandemic. So how, what you suggest uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, remedy as a remedy of this issue? Thanks. Yeah, hi, I, I, can you hear, can you hear? Oh, yeah. Um, you see, I, I, I fully agree with you that um, I uh, thought actually two months back when uh, this was happening that the online teaching courses were online teaching was being initiated. In higher education, we should not have a problem of digital divide. This is this was my thinking. But then I came to know all these. What you are telling is very very relevant because i my old college where i studied in palgar government victoria college i got a group the victorian group they wrote to us telling that this many students do not have so we were collecting money the old students to provide uh, smartphones to them so access to this technology or gadgets devices is a major issue so these online courses then when we are conducting unless we make sure that it will not even reach them, then forget about their learning. Yes, I agree. Now, what is coming in the way is one is the technology part, the, the, the device part. The second is the connectivity part. Connectivity part uh, seems to be, uh, as, uh, if it is an online course, um, is the disconnection that might happen uh, often. That is the thing. So, completely having online courses is not a solution. Absolutely. There is no, I don't think that we, we have to think of that. Even if we have all the technology available and the connectivity throughout, I wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't suggest that. We are not thinking of a higher education system where there are no colleges, no study centers. I don't think at the moment we should do that. We, do, we don't have to do that. I think that's a little too much to think at this stage. Maybe that might happen. Uh, uh, after after maybe 20 years 30 years maybe let we we'll see at that time but in the next five years development if you are looking at the classroom become is important so it is a blended learning that we are talking about and blended learning when you say that, that there are various types of platforms or social media that we can use for that purpose if uh, google meet is not a solution okay forget about it okay I find today one of the most accessible thing is WhatsApp. The technology, the device part can be device. I think when I, with, I was having a discussion with the management of Adam in college, they told us very clearly that if they don't have a, a, a smartphone, they can have ways of, I mean, smartphone may not be the solution. It may be a tablet. It may be, you know, that's why India, while of making more phones, 
and not allowing Chinese devices to come in. India should do. Develop India have developed uh, many of you know a very cheap uh, tablet as early as uh, some 15 years back. Akash, what happened to that? Nobody took it up. I, they developed the prototype. Nobody took it up to produce the uh, thing and make it cheaper. They said hundred rupees at that time. Forget about hundred rupees. It is five hundred rupees. It is thousand rupees. It is accessible and it is not a major issue. If you have the whatever uh, connectivity that is required for uh, using or, or uh, uh, WhatsApp or such simple interactive, um, even video may not be required always. In audio, may be a good uh, possibility. So I think technology, the devices will come up, and now I think more people will go into that, provided we are ready to use it. But the major issue is how this. Uh, in the networking, WhatsApp networking can be um, uh, properly integrated to the classroom teaching. That is, a, to me, that is a major issue. Uh, how many of our students are using WhatsApp? I think you do a survey and find out. Yes. Majority students. 60 percent, 70 percent. What's up? 100 percent. 100 percent. If 100 percent people are familiar with WhatsApp, WhatsApp is a good platform. WhatsApp is a very good platform. Having a because WhatsApp is very simple to operate, very easy to deal with, and um, uh, the, the 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 storage of course is something to be there. Like to remove things that are off and on, they don't have to keep the things. They don't have to. They can put it into offline, and also that um, the, the, there are pictures, video. They can talk also uh, in the WhatsApp uh, platform. WhatsApp talk also is possible if the telephone is not required for that. Interactivity, yes, interactivity is required by the that uh, data that is provided for the telephone. I think these are all achievable. These are all achievable. And you think uh, if there is a demand for that, uh, do, do, don't you think that uh, Reliance will not come in and make uh, that available, connectivity? You know, they have connectivity, the whole backbone of, uh, of fiber optics backbone they have created in the country. They have the money to do that. They are one of the few corporate sector people who are doing very well. Will they not come out with the do this? They will. So technology is not the issue. Are we ready to invest some money from government or the institution to provide that? Even as a loan, even as a loan. To the students to buy a this thing. Yeah. These are the possibilities we have to think of. I think that's that's, that's right. Yes, complete online. I am not telling classroom. Yes, it is important that they come to the institution. But the way the classroom teaching will have to be organized. With Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, I hope uh, she uh, Dr. Shiva, your question has been answered. Uh, Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Uh, now, now may I have the next question, please? Anyone online? Sir, yeah, sure, I please? Sure. Sure. Sindhu. Thank you. Thank you, Rajesh, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, Menon, sir, it was wonderful listening to you and do cherish the occasions we had to interact with you, sir, a few years back. Uh, very rich presentation, sir. And in fact, the need for us to think on these uh, aspects, especially in the IGNO context. Uh, because you have the right person to to speak for us because you have the right background with igno as well so one um, point or maybe one question which comes to my mind is that uh, uh, during the pandemic period of course we are into technology in a big way we ourselves as well now looking at the distance education post pandemic uh, one one point which may, may maybe comes to my mind is that sir from the learner's perspective that you know with regard to the technology adaptation even uh, my, my myself being my experience, you know, when we're getting into online to interact and all there's some kind of, um, you know, uneasiness or not very comfortable to get on, get on to it, though I must have done it the previous day as well. So such kind of anxiety and especially teaching them to move on to technology, uh, probably, sir, that would that also be a requirement uh, because uh, for the uh, distance education institutions, or open universities, uh, we are into developing human resources. But maybe during this post pandemic, we also have a requirement or a need to um, empower our learners towards easy technology adaptation. 
uh, given the kind of heterogeneous learners that we have and also how to make the best use of the technology whatever we are giving to them as a platform many times uh, we do not know how to make the best use of it so maybe the learners also need to be equipped in that uh, regard sir can we move on to that so it's a question sir thank you sir hello yeah I, i think you are absolutely correct uh, dr sindhu uh, it is learners have to be um, moved into that oriented for that um, teachers also have to be oriented as i said earlier and my belief is that uh, you of course have experience with uh, the distance education students in the uh, in igro what are what are their needs and all this but the present generation is much more uh, into uh, using these technologies than the earlier generations we are uh, i know many people i got into whatsapp only about 2 3 years back i mean before that i sort of said that i'm not going to use whatsapp okay so telephone is good enough for me then i realized that there is no way but to have the whatsapp and um, and so the the students may find it easier to do that they are already oriented to that but still as you rightly said we have to get get them adapted for teaching learning purposes what they are not familiar with using these technologies especially whatsapp other technologies they may not have google meet and all they may not be using much uh, but uh, certain but they are they are more, more into using technology than us so uh, adapting them to this uh, how they can use it for learning purpose will depend upon uh, what sort of learning activities you are giving how you are going to give those uh, using whatsapp for that for example you create a group as i was suggesting for the students if academic counselor creates a group whatsapp group uh, somebody can be administrator in the regional center probably i don't know or in the study center itself admin can be one of them <coughs> and an initial discussion is provided that this is how we are going to use this platform how to use that part if few of them do not know yes we should teach them to know how to do that other technologies also lms for example learner management system i worked with some students first adopting uh, lms in the ambedkar university in delhi and we created a platform and then we oriented those students and teachers not students the, the the teachers now the teachers are coming back and telling in the post pandemic i get emails from them telling sir that those days when we are actually attended the classroom rajesh will remember that i mean we yes sir uh, yes sir very uh, much yes so that uh, the, the, that now they are coming back and telling that it has been very useful when this online thing was going on lms really helped us and whatever things we had to put it into the lms that we were able to do and students were able to access and they were already familiar with it so the familiarity and adaptation will come when we start using it so i think that is how i believe uh, dr sindhu but the issue is very very relevant what you raise uh, uh, orientation should be done but we, we start using it and then they will get into that because uh, that is the only way you know we have we have learned many things like that only when we start using it we learn it and using it for learning purpose yeah that's it thank you sir uh, madam i hope your query has been answered yes sir thank you sir oh thank you ma'am. thank you ma'am uh, in fact uh, that particular uh, instance of um, equipping teachers of ambedkar um, university uh with uh, an understanding of lms and other technologies uh that i think was one of uh, the path breaking initiative by any university in the country because uh, sir and his team thought much in advance what could be the future scenario and uh, that is kudos to you sir you and your team who visualized such a uh, scenario uh, and uh, equip the teachers as well as the learners to adapt themselves to this kind of a situation it was wonderful in fact uh, at least in the initial part i was also part of that particular effort so i could also learn many things how this kind of a situation can emerge and how it can be uh, made use of and that was wonderful thank you sir uh, now may i have uh, other questions as well
Sir Kenning? Please, please. Sir, good evening, sir. Moin Menin, sir. After a long time we are seeing now, I think. Actually... By the way, this is Dr. Jalita Kumari. We are the three Kuchin speaking, sir. Sir, are you online, sir? Yes, sir, sir can hear, I think. Sir is hearing. Oh. Sir, we were uh, meeting together at Alamin College earlier, I think. Two, three years back. Two years back. And um, re really, I think, uh, one of the wonderful opportunity, the one of the wonderful session I was hearing, I was getting uh, through Sir's talk uh, today. Because Sir was always an inspiration to me. Because uh, I have to openly tell you, sir, I I I was uh, seeing you as a man of liberated mind. Always I felt that whenever I was talking, when I whenever I was uh, in your presence, I always felt that sir is one of the biggest uh, person in this uh, open education scenario, and at the same time in the field of education because of your liberated mind. Only liberated people can do uh, a lot of things, contributions, uh, like you was uh, in OER and all. And uh, sir was actually, your face itself was a, an inspiration for me when I was presenting my paper on our, uh, this Moody land all in Malaysia years back. Sir. Actually, that was the first time I was seeing sir and uh, sir was coming into our education platform scenario and Dr. Rajesh was giving further opportunities for meeting together and getting your suggestions and advices for developing our uh, ICT based learning platforms and all. So uh, we are really I'm blessed with your talks today because I was also thinking uh, when Sir was uh, uh, presenting one beautiful example came to my mind regarding institution our uh, Study, regional center, study center, and headquarters system. Actually, regional centers, uh, center people are the functional level people of all the policies and uh, whatever regulations, uh, the innovations, what are coming uh, from the uh, university level. We are the people to interact with the learners, and we are the people at functional level. Actually, uh, like uh, uh, in our school time, I learned physics only at school time. And still, that the beauty of the picture of one atom is in my mind. It's a strong nucleus with the protons and the neutrons, and the electrons are dancing and working around the shell, around the nucleus in, the, in its shell. Actually, the active part of the atom is the uh, electrons moving around the nucleus in, its, in their shells. Like that we are. So the whole, the whole power, the whole energy is situated in the central system and in the central part and we are working on that. With policies and regulations, we are uh, uh, closely uh, hold on uh, towards the center of the thing. Like that our system, I think. But if we are making again one circle of nucleus around us, we will not be uh, liberated and we will not be free to work uh, like sir was feeling. I was feeling like that sometimes because because of uh, the uh, what I, I rigidness, uh, rigidity of our system or something like that. So sir was telling about some utilization of community resources and all. Actually, it was uh, uh, the the philosophy behind the community colleges and all earlier and the convergence system itself. But somehow. What is happening, whatever innovations are coming in our society, especially in the education field, the system is highly accepted by the business people than the academics. It is what the curse of our system, I think. If academics are uh, putting uh, uh, their hand in that and they are head holding in that, that will be the one of the beautiest part, I think, most beautiful part. Instead of that, what is happening? Society will accept all the innovations for making a new business. That's what happened at that time also, I think. 
somehow now as per UGC ODL regulation and all, our system is more rigid than earlier now. So we don't have that liberty to open, uh, open new institutions. We don't have that liberty to make the cooperation of the society. Many experts are there among us, but we are not uh, free to utilize the resources of these people and many, many other things are there. Even though I think by utilizing, but at the case of this uh, digital system, especially at the pandemic situation, actually we were liberal to utilize and to approach and uh, uh, even I think, uh, it's my view only, I don't know, whatever may be the policy, I think uh, we would be able to, we would be liberal uh, to utilize our academic resource to uh, transact educational experiences with the learners in study centers and the regional centers. At least we are, but immediately we will think we are not academic, approved academic counselors, how we will interact like that. So this is one of the curse I think. If we are not for asking for uh, remuneration and all, what will be the problem to interact with the learners by imparting our edu educational experiences and all? Actually, I was feeling this is the only platform I can say because Moin Man and Sir was presenting. You can only, I think this will be digestible before you only, I think, sometimes. That is why, if that happiness, the, the liberty uh, thoughts, the thoughts of liberty came to my mind, I was sharing with you, sir. And even utilizing the platforms available, we are not free. There also, we may have a lot of theoretical implications, the theoretical uh, norms. And I don't know why. Uh, Madam Sindhu was telling uh, about the um, implementation of these things in the coming situation, coming days. Really, I am happy that we can expect a post-pandemic period with a real blended learning situation, I think. And the blended learning was uh, uh, discussed among the people who are in the distance education earlier. Now, all the conventional system is behind that. And once it is used, once they have enjoyed the beauty of the uh, implementations of this technology, I think they won't leave it behind. So I think in the post-pandemic period, the universities, the higher education system, and the whole world will enjoy the beauty of blended learning. Uh, and uh, for implementing the system, we were trying to make entertainment to edutainment. And now it becomes a education itself. So that will be, I hope, like that. And sometimes some situations uh, in Malayalam, we are telling that Urveshi Shabam Ubagara. Like that for implementation of ICT, E Urveshi Shabam Ubagara I feel is in it. So giving all these thoughts in my mind, I am very much thankful to you, sir. And uh, once again, I got the got an opportunity to hear your words, of, uh, sir, uh, just for uh, sharing this thought. I was coming to this platform, means uh, in the discussion, and uh, I'm very much thankful to Dr. Rajesh uh, for giving this opportunity, I think. It would have been uh, shared and they invited all the Igno fraternity uh, to hear sir's talk. That is what I am feeling. I am feeling bad because other people from our regional centers and the headquarters were not hearing their talk. So that was that much beautifully used. And uh, thank you very much once again, sir. And that's all. Thank you, madam. Uh, sir, I will make it uh, short, my observation. Dr. Jalika, nice to see you. See you, hear you. I can see you because you are not in the visual district for uh, your observations. I, I have no disagreement to what you said. Always there are constraints when you work in an institution. Yes, now I can see you. Yeah, you have put on the video. Um, see, what I would suggest to you is, uh, I think there is a there is a not coming in. Yes. I think I can just mute the video, so I can share audio, so that uh, the can see. Which audio is you can audio. I think that, that that's okay. That's now uh, fine. Um,
So I agree with you that I have no disagreements on that and I have worked in different institutions. Constraints are there everywhere. Everywhere. You can't be free as uh, uh, I am because I am free because have, nobody restricts me from <laughs> talking. Yeah, so I talk whatever that comes to my mind and I try to be as practical as possible. But uh, surely I keep in mind uh, uh, the future. And uh, let me also tell you that this I learned from our former Vice Chancellor, Professor uh, Takole. Takole, Professor Takole is, uh, is in Pune and uh, he always uh, comes and talks. And everybody, you know, you talk, uh, retired people talk, they talk about the earlier times by telling that, oh, it was so good earlier, now things have all become bad. He doesn't talk about the earlier, earlier things. He only talks about future. He says that this is how future we have to be. We can work towards that. I really, I think he has influenced me quite a bit. And uh, I also think in those terms. And I always feel that freedom uh, within those constraints, we can always make use of in changing. If, if you look at the regional center level, I agree that regional center being more autonomous sometimes uh, it doesn't sir sir the mic is muted sir the microphone is muted please okay 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 now it's audible I think sir will uh, join in a moment. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Kono, just to yes, sir, yes. Sir. Can you hear? Me? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Can you hear? So I'll just finish this. So even informally creating such groups, in, interacting with the students is possible. You don't have to have ignore permission. If uh, or you don't have to give permission, even from regional center. If the student of 50 students in that uh, regional region or 100 students in that region gets into a WhatsApp group themselves. Um, you can informally instigate that. Instigation is not a bad, it's not the right word. Motivate them to do that. And they can get into a creating a learning community as a change will make a big difference. I mean, I, I believe in that. There's a learning community which people can, yes, some of them may not uh, access the WhatsApp. You know, they are adults. They know what to do and what not to do. That's fine. That is adult education. That is what is Igno also tells that it is. They are all uh, autonomous learners. That's fine. But those who want to do, they always have this group as a help, and that has been happening. I mean, during this pandemic time, there are new WhatsApp groups have come up. The old uh, sleeping WhatsApp groups have become very active. All these have happened. So if you if they think that this group is helping them in their learning. And isolation is a problem for distance learning. Igno doesn't have to, as a policy, say that we are using WhatsApp. Doesn't matter. They can still use that. You see, we used to have face a formal Facebook page in uh, Penang in the Wawansan Open University. Students, we thought the students can interact through the face. Many, very, very few students used to that because they created their own group of a Facebook. They didn't want uh, us to get into that. <coughs> Fine with that. They were interacting among themselves. And uh, we, we welcomed that. We said, yes, if you are more uh, uh, spontaneous and you can come freely with whatever your views and all in your own private way or WhatsApp group, so be it. It doesn't matter uh, as, lo as long as it helps you in your studies. So I think that's all the answer I can give you. Uh, I know constraints will always be there. But as far as Igno is concerned, if you know he is not deciding as an institution not to change, it will get isolated in the field of distance education. I can tell you that. Because others are changing. Others are changing. Other uh, open universities are changing. They don't even want to call it open university. They want to change that. So change is happening elsewhere. If the environment changes and you decide that as an institution not to change, uh, then that Thank you. 
Okay, not audible, sir. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, is audio there now? Uh, no, now it's okay, sir. Now it's yeah. okay. It goes off. No, yes, I don't yes. know what problem with me. Uh, uh, thank you. I don't know. Yeah. So th uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was a wonderful exposition. Uh, anyone else wants to raise any question or uh, any suggestion or any point that has to be raised? Anyone else on me? Anyone wants to discuss? Uh, okay, sir, I feel uh, it has been an exhaustive session uh, with so many comments and discussion points coming. Uh, so I think uh, I may rather not encourage more because uh, then it will run well into uh, the lunch break as well. So I would uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for clearing all our doubts and all our discussion points have been elucidated by you. Uh, it has been wonderful, sir. sir may, uh, may I now request our uh, assistant registrar, Sri Praveen, uh, to uh, sum up the main discussion points and also to propose a word of thanks for this wonderful session. I hope it's being recorded. All the yes, sir, yes, sir. Everything is being recorded and it will be put online also, so okay. that uh, many more people can access it. And it right. will be there on uh, Facebook as well, sir. Right. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. It gives me immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks for the day. Tamil philosopher poet Thiruvallua has quoted more than 2,000 years ago, En enbe, enai elut enbe, ivir endum, kann enbe, valum uirke. The so-called numbers and the so-called writings are the eyes of the living people. Such is the importance of education. It was indeed a pleasure listening to the lecture by Professor Menon sir on the topic distance education, a post-pandemic perspective. Professor Menon has stressed the importance of technology and the need to think out of the box in order to provide cost-effective solutions suitable for individualized and inclusive learning. He has highlighted the importance of integrating innovative practices with the existing good practices known as transformative change. The importance of digital learning community which supports learners from admission till assessment and feedback as well as online learning community through the use of social networking platforms have been explained to us in detail. I can definitely say that the presentation provided a comprehensive picture of what we need to adopt in order to reach out to the learners during the pandemic situation and beyond. Thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Dorothy R.D. Cochin and Dr. Sukumar R.D. Trivandrum and all staffs of R.C. Cochin, Trivandrum and Vadagara for their support in conducting the webinar. I thank colleagues from other regional centers, study center functionaries, and students for their active participation in this webinar. Sincere thanks to Dr. M. Rajesh, Regional Director, R.C. Vadagara, for his untiring efforts in organizing the webinar series. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, you have put it uh, in the more, uh, most uh, 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 and uh, comfortable way. It has been wonderful. Uh, uh, as always, to listen to Mohan Menon, sir. I have been the beneficiary of his talks very often. And it has been, uh, sir, uh, from the bottom of our hearts at RC Vadagara, RC Cochin, and RC Trivandrum, uh, we all thank you for, uh, for bringing to us the various facets of distance education that we have not thought about. Uh, our, we are in the process of thinking about. And I'm sure we can implement many of these things in our daily policy as well. Our study centers have also been benefited a great deal uh, from your visionary talk. And many more people will be benefiting from your talk when we put it on the web, uh, on our Facebook Facebook page and in other media also. Uh, so that maximum number of people can benefit from your talk later on as well. Sir. 
it has been wonderful as always and thank you sir thank you for uh, being part of this endeavor i also wish to inform our participants that uh, on monday we will be having another webinar session by dr sanjay nayar uh, regional center you know regional center uh, coaching that we she where she will be talking about various uh, web initiatives and some of the other measures that uh, uh, institutions like you know can take forward in the post covid scenario i wish you all i wish all of you can join that session as well i'm sure it will be a wonderful session as well and uh, mohan menon sir if you could also spare some time to join that session we'll be grateful sir Yeah, please send the invite connection. Absolutely, sir. You will send the invite yeah. not only for this session but also for other sessions. Okay. Your guidance as well as your presence will be a great morale booster for all of us. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vanna. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, remind others that uh, they have that uh, form uh, for the link for which has already been posted. Will be sending you the e certificate sir. Well. Thank you, Vanna. And all thank you, sir. So especially. and my colleague uh, at uh, various regional centers for having made this uh, uh, session a wonderful session thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you Thank you. Hello, thank you.